Hi, right, back here on Inside Wrestling Radio and up to the interview portion of the program. And uh, today we're pleased to have on the phone with us Cole Cabana. Cole has worked all over the world, really, and, and worked in Europe and Pan and all over the place. He's currently working for Ring of Honor. We're just glad to have him with us. Uh, we're going to talk to Cole today about his career and about a lot of other things he's got going on. But right now, welcome to the program, Cole Cabana. Cole, how you doing, man? All right. A little sleepy, I'll be honest. Uh, you might be saying, cold man, you're sleepy. It must be 4 o'clock in the morning, 5 o'clock. No, it's noon. <laughs> uh, but that's the life of a pro wrestler. Exactly. Uh, it's, it's hard It's hard to get you guys up this time of day. I, I understand that. I've, I've been there, brother. But uh, we'll, we'll try to get through it as best we can. And, again, we do appreciate you coming on the radio, Colt. And uh, before we get started, man, recently uh, I j- just kind of breaking here in the last day or so. As Ring of Honor, who you currently work for, has uh, has lost their deal with HDNet. Uh, have, have you heard anything about that at all? Do you know anything about the deal? Uh, I got a letter yesterday from uh, management saying that this is what's happening, and then a couple hours later it broke on the Internet. To be honest, I'm worried about it. You know, we had a great time on HDNet, two fun years. You know, I'm still on the... Uh, on television over in Los Angeles on KDOC with MWA Hollywood, and then we're going to continue to really, uh, you know, stay strong here on ROH with GoFightLive.tv and just continuing our presence over the internet and, and house shows in Chicago, New York, and all over the world. So sure. I'm not worried. I'm sure things will pick up. If not, you know, they've been great for the last nine years for ROH. They actually did do a, a good production for you guys. I followed it. We actually get HDNet here, and uh, we've been following uh, some of the program. And, and they were doing you know, pretty right by you guys from everything I could tell. I guess it was just a two-year deal from the beginning, and it's just the contract just ran out. No fault, no foul, right? I guess. I think it was a two-year deal, and uh, on the bigger and better things. Let's go back in your early uh, part of your career. And, and uh, Were you always a fan of wrestling? Or what got you into the business? Yeah, man. I love wrestling. I know I've watched it ever since I was three years old. I remember watching it. Uh, giant on my parents' floor as a kid, seeing him uh, get his hair cut in the handicap match. I think that was 1984. Yeah. I must have been three years old. And I don't know, ever since then, I've been hooked. And I've watched it. You know, I've seen uh, all the eras, the Hogan era, the Attitude era, the, the PG era. I've, I've been through all of them. Kind of been a fan through the whole gamut of, of what's been going on over the last, I guess, your lifetime, pretty much, yeah? Correct. Who were you trained by, Coke? Uh, two guys out of Chicago trained me, Ace Steel and Danny Dominion. It was called the Steel Domain Training Center. I played a year of college football, and I, uh, I, I decided that I couldn't put my dream of being a pro wrestler on hold any longer, so I, I decided to stop football. And I got trained by these guys. I, I did some research. They were, the cl- they were the closest yet most reputable guys. And then while I was there, I, I trained alongside you know, CM Punk and guys like Ryan Braddock who was on SmackDown and a couple other guys. I mean, we were just we were just a bunch of kids in a in a little storefront window in Chicago, and then a couple years later, that's what happened. You and uh, Punk came up pretty much together in there, right? Correct. I, I guess it was a thrill for you recently when he had your shirt on there on uh, on Raw, yeah. You know, CM Punk he wore my T-shirt, and then the next day at uh, ColtMerch.com, T-shirt sales blew up, man. It was fantastic. I, you know. I did, appreciate what Punk did for me. Did you know he was going to do that? Did I know that he was going to wear the shirt available at ColtMerch.com? No, I didn't. He just <laughs> did it, man. He just kind of popped it out there. That was kind of a cool gesture of him on his part to kind of throw you a bone there, huh? Threw me a couple bones. I appreciate it. <laughs> Absolutely. So you you actually did some work with uh, with WWE there. Tell us about uh, getting called up to the Fed. I had to be a thrill for you at the time. Well, there's two different, two different ways, you know. That, that I got signed when I got signed. I get called up, so you know I got sent a contract and I signed my contract. And about a year and a half later, I got called up. Both were a joy and a dream in themselves. You know, getting that contract, signing it. And sending it away and knowing that I had just uh, signed with, you know, my dream and, and what I've wanted to do my whole life. And then when I got called up, you know, going out there for the first time as a contracted wrestler on SmackDown with a, my own little introduction and a little box and my own theme music that was, although it was awful, it was mine. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> and that was, uh, you know, another dream. And um, even, even though I lost to Brian Kendrick in about four minutes, you know, it was uh, still my moment. I cherish it. Well, let's backtrack just a little bit, uh, to, to back into 2006 when you did the uh, Wrestle, Wrestling Society X. That thing was was kind of short-lived, but Matt Classic, man, that <laughs> that's a great gimmick. Can, tell us about Matt Classic. Yeah, Matt Classic's still home strong. I just did a show in, in uh, Las Vegas called Lucha Las Vegas as Matt Classic. Five years later, you know, still holding on. Matt Classic was, a, was just meant to be a, a straight-up jobber, and uh, I was told I can wear a mask, and then I'll kind of do some jobs, and the next season, Colt Cabana will come on. That was a way to get me some money and get me under contract and give me the experience. Um, but, 
it kind of, I, you know, I, I turned it into what I wanted it to be. I thought, well, at least I should have some kind of character, and that was what I came up with. And then he kind of stole the show, and he's kind of gained a little cult following, which is kind of cool, you know, which is, I think it says a lot for me as a as a performer and an artist. Yeah. You know, I've, been, I've been working on Cole Cabana for the past 12 years. You know, I'm still able to be a character actor and a character wrestler, and I can come up with these different characters. Cole, and uh, Matt Classic is a good example of that also. I've been I've been working for the for the the Instant Clown Posse. I'm doing a, a character ca- named Officer Jack Offerson. <laughs> so uh, it just shows the, the diversity that I can that I can do as a wrestler. Sure, absolutely. And, and kind of staying with the Matt Classic there thing for a minute. I thought it was, I thought it was really funny. The profile had you listed as having won the uh, heavyweight championship in 1952, which was 28 years before you were born. <laughs> I think there's a, a handful of things that I you know I, I've beaten. You know, I think I trained Vern Gagne and <laughs> Stu Hart. <laughs> and there uh, it has a bunch of other stuff too so what, what do you think uh, was the problem with Wrestling Society X did MTV not get behind it like they should have or what happened with them yeah I don't think it was a problem at all I think it was fantastic it was one of the best times I ever had in my life. it was one of the best I, I think you know uh, the, what, the way Kevin Klein and I put it together and the way he, he found his dream and got the money and, and MTV was putting it on its you know, TV show. In my mind, it was it was something new, fresh, and uh, and I was excited to see it on MTV. And when it came on, and I realized, you know, they didn't really give us any advertising or publicity, or right. they didn't cross promote with anybody. And obviously, if it didn't catch on within a couple months, they were probably going to give it the boot, and that's what happened. So, I, you know, I point the finger a little at MTV, the company, but how can you point the finger when? They put it on their their own airways. So my my thing is with MTV, and they you know they they trying to to do it again with, with MTV too with this Lucha Libre USA. Do you think they're just trying to tap a, a hot commodity, or, or why do you think MTV has such interest all of a sudden in wrestling? Well, I think there's money in wrestling. Obviously, you, the USA Network is doing well with it. So you know, it's been the cornerstone of their company, of their TV channel. So there, there is money in wrestling, but you just have to get behind it. You know, and maybe they don't realize WWE's been doing this for forty years, fifty years. You know, whatever, however long WWF has been going, and they've been on USA. You know, since I was a kid watching prime time wrestling. So if they think that they can just turn it on and within months it'll it'll be hot and get the same ratings, you know, they're crazy. Nowadays, you know, I guess nobody's really giving anything a chance to go long term. Yeah. Just like you know, Sein, you know, Seinfeld was going to be canceled in the first season, and you know, they gave it because it had such low. Numbers. You know, thankfully they they let it air out, let it run, and now it was one of the most money making television shows that's ever been on our television. Sure. So if, uh, you know, if they just give stuff a chance, I think, and let it air out. You're right. Yeah, absolutely. And, and get behind, getting behind it and giving it a chance to kind of grow and, and find its way is key, like you said. Now, speaking of Seinfeld there, uh, Colton, we're up on a break right now. We're going to we're gonna go to break right here. But when we come back, uh, you, you actually do some stand-up comedy. I've been doing comedy all over the, all over the country now. Yeah, yeah. Fantastic. We're, I want to talk a little bit to you about doing stand-up and how it relates to, to wrestling. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> cool. All right, we'll talk about all that stuff when we get back right here on Inside Wrestling Radio with Colt Cabana. All right, back here on Inside Wrestling Radio, and today on the phone we have Colt Cabana with us, and uh, we were talking a little bit before the break about his early career, his time in uh, various organizations, and uh, we got up to where he's we actually got into doing some comedy, some stand-up stuff, and we'll talk about that in a few minutes, uh, Colt. But before we do, you pretty much uh, wrestled all over the globe, pretty much. I mean, you've done uh, Scotland, Germany, France, England, done some Puerto Rico stuff, and even some uh, Japanese. Out, out of all the international locations, what was your favorite to work in? Chicago. Chicago, huh? <laughs> my hometown, man. Like, well, you know, this summer I went back to some of the shows. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I'm a, I'm like a legend. I'm like a god on Star Alliance. And I can, uh, I have so many points with them. I've traveled all over the world. But uh, to get on my bike and ride to a show is one of, the, one of the best feelings in the world. Tell us a little bit about your overseas work, though. Was there any, anywhere in particular that you that you really enjoyed or any fans you really like working for uh, outside of the United States? Uh, well, in 2004, I spent a long time over in England, in Europe. I was there about three months. You know, that was, it was not only just living over there and, and understanding that culture and the way they wrestled, but really kind of growing up as a person and, and being able to kind of mature somewhere else, you know, not, not in your own house, and kind of figure yourself, figure yourself out, you know, a lot of train rides by yourself, and getting lost in the airport and not having any clue what's going on, so that was a really good experience for me, and plus, you know, I wrestled 72 matches in 64 days at one point on that tour, so uh, it was really, you know, if you, you know, there's a lot of guys out there that want to be pro wrestlers these days, and they uh, they just want to do it once a month or so, you know, you really got to, you really got to get in there and learn how to work, learn how to wrestle. If you 
want to if you want to do this. Kind of have to know your craft uh, when you're dealing with people who don't uh, who don't necessarily speak the same language as you do. Correct. Hundred percent. Uh, Cole, tell me about getting into Ring of Honor. You were kind of in on the ground floor of that deal, uh, weren't you? Yeah, man. Me and Funk were there from like the third show on, and uh, we were the Midwest guys, and we were dropping up, and they'd start out in Philadelphia at the Murphy Rec Center, and uh, they had a lot of East Coast and West Coast talent, but no Midwest talent. This was over a decade ago, about, and then you know we were the we were the hot thing in the Midwest. We're the only people traveling. We're the only people really getting into our car and driving around. You know, we had hot feuds going in Minnesota, Kentucky, and Pittsburgh, and Ohio, and Detroit at the same time. And ROH wanted to bring us out to uh, to the East Coast. So that's when we started with ROH. And nine and a half years later, or whatever it is, here we are. You know, or here I am. He's he's the champion of the world making millions of dollars. I'm, I'm still hanging out. But you you know, but you guys are doing good work there, Ring of Honor. You, you currently are just come out of a, a pretty hot angle there with, uh, with Kevin Steen and, and uh, El Generico and all that stuff. Uh, tell the people who may not uh, be as familiar with Ring of Honor uh, a little bit behind that angle and, and how you guys got that thing going. Uh, well, Ring of Honor, in my mind, is probably for probably the greatest athletes in professional wrestling. And uh, not only that, we can, uh, we can tell a story, but we don't do cartoon stories and we don't, you know, we don't, we don't blow off our feuds in a month or whatnot. So what happened was Kevin C. and El Generico were a tag team for eight years or so in their career and unbelievably no one expected they split apart and the main story was being told was Kevin Steen was wanted to wrestle El Generico and then one year later it happened a final battle and that was the cap off of, of all the you know, in between there was a lot of different ups and downs the roller coaster you know I friended my friend El Generico Steve Carino tried to take Kevin Steen under his wing and it was kind of uh, a two on two situation for about a year that final battle El Generico you know beat Kevin Steen you know Kevin's got to leave our age yeah he's, actually it was a loser leave uh, leave the company kind of gimmick. He, Kevin Steen has said in interviews uh, after that show that he's going to be doing other things and working for other promotions. Uh, you look for him to be back in Ring of Honor relatively quickly, though, don't you? I don't know at all, no. Oh, you don't think he'll come back at all? He was supposed to leave. <laughs> yeah, but, but come, come on. I mean, <laughs> yeah, we know how this thing works, too. You know what I'm saying? I mean, <laughs> well, you know, I know how it works other places, but Ring of Honor, you know, we stay true to our word. And I think that's all we really have at this point, and we're going to hold on to it. Cool. Well, I mean, that's 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 commendable, absolutely. Uh, Colton, the last couple of minutes we got here, let's talk about your, your big stand-up uh, comedy career you got going. Uh, you've been doing that for several years, too, right? Yeah, you know, I've, I've been uh, stand-up. I did a, a tour with Mick Foley. We traveled around the country. I've also been doing improv uh, with my team in Chicago. But my newest venture that I'm really proud of is a thing called $5 Wrestling. It's available on highspots.com for only $5. And what it is is that we do... Me and stand-up comedian Marty DeRosa, we do comedy over professional wrestling that's so bad, it's good. It's like the worst, Mystery Science Theater 3000 style. We find the worst wrestling in America, and then we do commentary over it. We make it amazing. You know, Mar Marty DeRosa is one of the top comedians in Chicago. You know, eventually he'll probably go out to L.A. or New York and, and make it big. And, uh, you know, I, I'm my, my witty self. And uh, it's only five bucks. I, I recommend it. Check it out at HighSpots.com. Gotcha, and that's only at High Spots. There's not no other place you can see that. It's it, man. It's exclusively through them. Well, Colt, listen, man, it's, it's great having you on. And before we get out of here, uh, tell us uh, any website presence you got out there, or any uh, any plugs you want to get out before we let you go. Sure, man. Hey guys, I do I do a podcast every Thursday where I, I sit down with a different professional wrestler every week, and uh, you know the, the difference is that these are my friends. These are guys that I know, my compadres, my companions on the road. We're road warriors together, and we get kind of we kind of be and give you a good inside look at wrestling. So you can check that out at welovecult.com and it's available on iTunes. It's the number one iTunes on, it's the number one podcast on iTunes at the personal journal section. I'm very proud of that. If you, if you need any Colt merchandise, coltmerch.com, t-shirts, buttons, posters, anything you can do, you're supporting independent wrestling, man. If you want to see this thing survive, you know, I don't get a big paycheck. I don't have a giant daddy warbucks behind me. I don't have a machine behind me. It's just me, just me struggling. Struggling on the road, like animals. Yeah, exactly. .com. Yeah, try, trying to make our way as, as we as we all try to do, right, Cole? <laughs> That's right. Absolutely. All right, man. Uh, you guys, uh, Ring of Honor is actually going to be coming to South Carolina. Is that right? You're going to be coming here soon. Charlotte, North Carolina. And when is that? Do you know? January fifteenth, Charlotte, North 
Carolina. Come on down to the Expo Center. I don't know where it's at. ROHWrestling.com is the Come see me wrestling. Very cool. Well, Coco Cabana, man, thanks so much for, for coming on the radio with us today. We greatly appreciate it, and, and, and best of luck to you and your future and everything you're doing in the new year. All right, man. Did you just say best of luck my future endeavors? <laughs> yeah, ex- exactly. <laughs> Great. Best of luck right. in your future endeavors, bro. Uh, thank you. <laughs> All right. That's going to do it for the interview portion of the program. We appreciate Coco Cabana coming on. We'll be right back here with more Inside Wrestling Radio coming up next.